Hey everyone and welcome to this video special which is a tribute simply because today as I'm recording this and and doing this voiceover it's uh, January 15 of 2024 and that means that tonight uh, it will be the Emmy Awards and you might know or not know this, but Evan Peters is nominated for an Emmy for his uh, portrayal of Jeffrey Dahmer in the Dahmer Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Um, and we're excited for him, aren't we? And <laughs> that's why I've decided to, as sort of a tribute to, um, to his amazing skills, um, and because I, I am a hundred percent sure that he's going to win this award. I just, I feel it in my bones. There's something completely wrong if he's not going to win it. I know the field, uh, the other, um, um, actors that have been nominated in his category are outstanding. I love them all. They're amazing, but Evan Peters was, he was amazing. He was, uh. He's in his own category. Uh, anyway, that's not what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the fact that I've decided to do something completely crazy because I had such little time to finish this portrait. It was uh, a constant rush against time. And um, <clears throat> it's just been... It's been sort of a monster on its own, <laughs> really. So I hope you bear with me. Um, this is going to be a watercolor portrait, but as you may know, I usually start off with a pencil sketch, um, which I've also done this time. And by the way, as, as I'm doing this voiceover, I have a glass of red wine with me because we're celebrating and yes, it's after 5 p.m. here, so <laughs> it's okay. It might be morning when you're watching this, but as I was recording this, um, yeah, so I'm just having this pre-dinner drink, which is really cool and really nice, and ah, it just feels good. Um, so, yeah, and you know, I'm just, you can see the reference photo, obviously, on the left, and my... Uh, crazy weird attempt to try and create some likeness <laughs> which is um sometimes works out and other times not as much mm, good wine <laughs> anyway um maybe i should have sped up this this part of the video even more than i have done because Please, and may, maybe I should take this opportunity to ask you if I should just skip more parts. Because what I really want to do with this channel is to be as open and as transparent as I can be about every step of the drawing process. Meaning, there are so many artists out there that skip and skip and skip and skip, you know what I mean? And they just make you see all the, all the quote unquote amazing uh, <clears throat> clips of what they're doing. And they're not really showing you guys um, the problems that they had as they were sketching or, you know. And I believe that I, I really want to um, kill the stigma or like the prejudice around all this because not prejudice the pre-assumptions god i don't know the right word i want to be as honest and open about this because i believe that this is the myth that we often create around drawing that it's really really hard and only a few people can do it and only if you're born with a talent or if you're you know, um, a special kind of breed, which is just not true. Um, everyone can learn how to draw. And um, 
it just takes a lot of practice. And so, and even if you've practiced, been practicing for a really, really, really long time, you still, um, you still experience these um, periods or these obstacles um, where just nothing, nothing works and everything is working, or you feel everything is working against you. Um, <clears throat> and that there, there's nothing to be afraid of because those moments are your chance to learn something and actually move forward and develop your, your skills as an, as an artist. So, um, and I want, that's why I want to be as transparent as possible, but I'm wondering if it's too tedious, if it's just too boring to watch, uh, these detailed, um, videos. Um, if you think it's boring, maybe you shouldn't follow me because, I mean, you or you can just skip over it if it's too much. I just, I just want, I don't want to be like everyone else. And I've, I've had my fair share of, you know, I've been, I felt so intimidated by those artists that made it look so effortless and so easy. And yes, sometimes I do drawings and sketches that feel like they just, sometimes it feels like they almost draw themselves. But it took me a long, 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 long time to get to that state where that is possible. Meaning I've had to practice a lot to uh, make that happen. And and I also want to be honest about that and say that I've struggled a lot. I struggled a lot before um, and this didn't come easy for me. I'm not particularly talented or... Uh, I don't come from a long line of artists. I'm I'm not um, particularly gifted. I'm a hugely normal. Is that even a way to say it? I don't know. But I'm super normal and super average. And uh, and I really have a humble approach to drawing because it is what it is. It's about practicing. It's not about you know being special. Um, if I think that if, if I had a talent, it would be a talent for not giving up, like, a like a fire, a drive, a hunger to always stay, to always keep going. Uh, I just, I, I just don't know how to stop sometimes. And that can also be a problem. <laughs> so, so, um, um, Yeah. I was just, I'm just curious. What do you think, what do you guys think? Is it too much? Is it too boring? Is it, do you learn something? Would you like me to slow down in certain parts? Would you like me to explain what I'm doing? Et cetera, et cetera. By the way, now we're talking about it. I have a beautiful, super amazing artist uh, follower on Instagram. She's also an artist and she's amazing. And she recommended or she suggested that I did a video on my drawing technique. And I thought, oh my God, that's such a great idea. idea. And then I thought, shit, <laughs> what is my drawing technique? I honestly, I honestly don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure about my drawing technique. I just draw. So, but I, it made me think that, okay, I have to make an, uh, a video about that and just sort of try and analyze what is it that I do when I draw? I mean, um, because I know some things I never do. I hardly ever smudge the graphite. For example, when I do graphite portraits, I never smudge. I used to do that a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I did it in every drawing and it just became, you know, we're all different people and some, some things stick with you and other things you give up. And to me personally, it just, um, it became a little boring. I needed something extra and 
I thought, well, it will be harder to achieve the really, really smooth or like a smoother kind of shadow without smudging, you know, without blending. When I say smudging, I mean blending. Um, so I want the crosshatch. I want to be able to do that. And then I looked into that and really practiced a lot, a lot, a lot with that. And it became, I mean, it was just love at first cross hatching <laughs> it was love at the first line um because it was a lot more difficult a lot more challenging and um i just immediately liked it also because it has this more te textural look and feel to it which i really like i like when you can see that it was made by hand there's something so organic and natural about it um i mean i admire a lot like i've said earlier i admire a lot of those like super super hyper naturalist um artists there are people out there that are amazing and do things i would never be able to do i mean i've tried to pursue it and i just i felt bored so i'm not judging anyone I'm not saying one thing is better than the other I'm just saying that was not for me you know so um so yeah I I uh I do a lot of cross hatching so I'm thinking maybe I should do a video on cross hatching also am I talking too much in these videos <laughs> you can say it I can take it please be honest and please be constructive i love constructive criticism um and if you have uh, suggestions or ideas about what you would like me to draw or try a certain technique um please feel free to reach out and ask and get in contact with me i'd love to hear from you guys um, because this is also, this is really, what I really want to do with this channel is I want to teach. I really want to teach you guys to, to get better at drawing and to, to look at drawing in a more, I would say, realistic way and, uh, believe in yourself because, um, it might not be as hard as you think it is. If that makes sense, I hope it does. Um, and what do you know, we've almost completed this pencil sketch. Now I'm just working on that bow tie. Mm. Right, so I picked a reference photo uh, from last year, I think. Maybe this was the SAG Awards. I think this is from the SAG Awards. Yeah, I think so. I think it is. Um, <clears throat> or the Golden Globe. The Go I think it's from the Golden Globes. Oh yes, and here you can see I've changed my location. <laughs> um, so it's a different light and the sun has gone down because it's January and the light is fading very early here. So, um, and I also have a job to do, so yeah. So now I'm just working on the hair and the lighting is a little yellow because it's from the electric light. It's just a lamp that I turned on to create more life. Light, sorry. Okay, and um, yeah, like I say, I feel confident that he's going to win this award. I don't know why, I just... I feel like there's something truly, um, I don't know, there's something about that performance that, um, and I don't, I don't think it's just because I'm biased. Maybe it is because I'm biased. Hey, what do I know? It might be, I might be biased. So what? I think, uh, I think he's an amazing actor and I think he can do a lot more than he's aware of. So, um, 
Yeah. I, th- I think that goes for a lot of us, that we are much more capable than we, than we think we are. Right? Um, ah, but you live and you learn. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, I feel confident that he'll win this award tonight. Um, I should have, I'm, ow. This is so boring to watch, or is it just me? I hope that you guys can learn something from my technique. Because here I'm just, I'm actually, I forgot to say that this is a mechanical pencil. And it's just a normal, um, I think it's 2B lead. It must be 2B lead, or is it HB? I think it's 2B. So it's a little softer than the usual HB lead that we usually use in, um, that is that is usually in a mechanical pencil when you buy it. Um, it's not a special mechanical pencil. It's a very, very cheap one from the dollar store. Um, so it's something you can easily get your hands on. And the reason why I use mechanical pencils, you guys know it, because I'm lazy and I don't want to sharpen pencils. And this is just, this is, like I said, this is just a sketch for that's going to prep for the watercolor later. So, and a lot of it is going to be, um, you know, uh, erased. So here's my uh, watercolor palette. It's Winsor Newton. It's the oldest one I have. And I thought about why not use that again? Because I haven't used it for a long time. And this is a little embarrassing. I have to uh, confess that I did not know that you're supposed to spray water on your watercolor and leave them for like a minute or two or maybe like at least 30 seconds before um, using them and this is because water activates the color look you can see the graininess of the color there in the yellow especially because the water is sort of um, um, yeah it's sort of activating the color and when you mix it together with your brush, it's going to create this vibrant, smooth color. So there you go. And as you can see, I've used a netted rubber and uh, I have erased a lot of the graphite. And um, and then I've uh, highlighted, or no, not highlighted, I've emphasized some details with a very thin uh, pigment liner. Then I prep the water with, uh, sorry, the paper with water and I'm using a very light coat of a blue underpaint. Now I'm adding the first very thin layer of a skin tone that I've mixed out of yellow ochre and I think Alice Aaron Crimson and a uh, blue maybe some oh my god i forgot ultramarin I, I forgot i think it's ultramarin um but it's just to help myself figure out while closely looking at the reference photo where are those shades let's have a look and where are the highlights and keep the highlights away from the from the from the paint avoid the highlights or like the lighter parts of the face. And this is a very critical phase. And this is one that takes a lot of practice, which I don't have. I might as well be honest. Um, this isn't going to be my best um, portrait. I can, let me just say that once and for all. But every time I use watercolor, I learn something new. And... <laughs> As, I mean, I did that with this one. I really learned a lot. Um, and so I go in and I wait for each layer to dry before adding a new layer and torquing the color. And here again, just to sort of map out the hair, I'm adding this very light uh, brown. 
make a mix of two or three brown um, colors and this is just to figure out where it are the dark parts of the hair and there's a lot of highlights in the hair because the some of the light is coming from above and it's shining directly down onto the hair so it appears white in some areas and this is why I am uh, being very cautious not to just you know push paint all over it so I'm very cautious uh, at this stage and um, very cautious not to place my hand on top of the uh, skin tones that I put down on the face <laughs> so it rubs off and here before actually putting the eye color in the eye I'm using a, a very dark blue almost purple I'm putting using that as an underpaint in the eyes and guys I know that you're supposed to do I think you're supposed I don't know I think you're supposed to do the skin tones before you do the eyes but I don't care because I needed the eyes to have a little soul before moving on this is what I mean by you know you're your own artist you make your own rules and if you want to do the eyes first you do that and then once it dried I I had mixed this reddish brown it's really really warm and dark and just a really nice color I put that over all of the all the eye all the all the iris parts um, yeah and notice that I keep the highlights in the eyes and now I thought okay we need a little action on this skin tone because he looks very flat and pale so I mix this much more red vibrant color and you might think oh my god that is too much that is too much color it's actually not also because depending on what paper you use this isn't the best quality so a lot of the pigment of the uh, paint actually soaks into the paper so that when it dries up it dries up a lot lighter uh, but it's not the same for each and every color so it's really about knowing the color and knowing the paper um, which can be tricky and now he looks very red like he's just been out in the sun and had a little too much sun without using any sunblock <laughs> but we'll get back to that and now I just wanted to add some definition to those eyebrows I needed some um, contrast because it looks very flat and dull so I just used the same color uh, like I did for the hair like that light brown and just following up with that along the the lash line if you want to call it that I don't know what to call it um, just to get a feel for to frame the eyes so to speak and again I don't want to like put a block of color down because eyebrows are hairs and I here I put some darker darker colors on the brown and I'm using an even darker color now and um, I'm using a thin brush to sort of create the illusion of strands of hair or like that there's these sections of hair and uh, to also differentiate between the dark and the lighter sections to create depth and this natural flow of the hair and you might have noticed I actually added a background and I really like the fact that I did that because it again it puts more uh, focus on the highlights it really stands out as being you know lit up from above which is so nice in this case um, yeah and I'm just oh there was that freckle right <laughs> and just working on okay and now I got really tired 
of the watercolor because let's face it I'm not a pro when it comes to watercolor I, I have still so much to learn so yours truly gave up a little bit and started working with the color pencils and I'm starting off with yellow ochre because I want a little bit of warmth he does have a cool skin tone but uh, it got a little too pinkish reddish I don't know um, and you might ask why are you using red in the eyebrows and around the eyes but I'm doing that to create I'm trying to overdo some of the hues because it creates a little bit of tension and a little bit of um, what is that word it just gives it a little bit of life you know and a little bit of intensity yeah I think that's what it is I want it to create some intensity and uh, yeah details 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 I'm working on those eyes and then oh my god I'm picking out an almost olive green and why would I do that why would I put green on her on his face I'll tell you why because when you actually concentrate and focus on looking at just the shadows there is actually a green sort of hue in some of those shadows especially especially along the cheeks and the jawline it might be because of the stubble I don't know but there is a green parts um, and it just mixes really well with the red because as we know they're complementary colors and it just brings this nice tension and yes as you can see I really um, sped up the video here because it gets a little boring and it's very detailed detailed detail and I'm just trying to save the mouth the lips because I'm not really happy with them um, I spent a lot of time there because I wasn't really happy with it I also erase parts of what I'm drawing right now because I wasn't satisfied with it it always helps to take a moment take you know pause and notice now I'm doing some of the stubble notice that I'm not using like a black I'm using a very soft brown and I'm making sure that those tiny hairs aren't drawn in the same direction the same length you know just the same like thickness um, and this is again to make it seem a little random and natural because um, we're going for natural always so um, yeah you can see I'm really really struggling with that lower lip <laughs> um, oh here comes the eraser Ugh, right anyway that's part of it like I said I need to show you all the details, all the falls. And here's the final result. <sighs> I hope you like it. And Evan for the win. You guys, he's gonna win. <laughs>